as senior firefighter on the William Hayes to sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's <laughs> early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled
have a lot of support from our city council, mayor, and city manager's office. Um, we would ask that all of our elected officials and city manager's office staff please stand. Give them a round of applause. And last but not least, we're going to recognize many individuals, members of the fire department here tonight, but um, that wouldn't happen without their support network at home. So I'd like to ask all of our loved ones, family members, kids that are here, all of our family members, if they would please stand. Let's give our family members a round of applause. You deserve much recognition, 365 days a year. And we appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you for joining in this important event.
And now we would like to recognize our promotions to captain. Michael Brunell. Promotions to the rank of battalion chief, William Patterson. For our final promotional recognition tonight will be for Fire Marshal, and that will be Kevin Pettigrew. I would like now to captain, call Captain Alvin Robertson to present an exceptional civil civilian service award. January 28, uh, 2013, engine 52, car 23, car 33, and car 39 responded to a 1021 Lenata Road here in Greensboro. Engine 52 had responded on a reported vehicle fire where a human victim was also said to be on fire. Upon engine 52's arrival, they did find that a fire, uh, they did find a fire in a vehicle had been extinguished and a male subject who had been severely burned. Gifford County EMS also responded. Car 23, Car 33, and Car 39, GFD fire investigators, responded at the request of Engine 52 to conduct a fire investigation, uh, which included in interviews and, and statements from witnesses. Upon investigating, a civilian witness was interviewed. The interview with this witness revealed that he had actually seen the fire victim lying down on the ground and on fire. This witness heroically placed his personal coat on the victim, smothering the flames. As of January 31st, 2013, the fire victim, who according to doctors at Cone Hospital, was originally expected to, to die from his burn injuries, was still alive. And, and as of uh, March of this year, uh, and conversations that I had with Baptist Hospital, Baptist Burn Center, uh, that victim was still living. It's unclear at this time the status of the victim due to HIPAA laws and the hospital not being able to release any information. However, the members of the Greensboro Fire Department, Fire and Life Safety Division, believe that this particular witness, uh, and also this individual who took action during that time, uh, was heroic in his service on January 28, 2013. We believe that his, his action played a significant part, humanly speaking, with the preserva preservation of the victim's life and hereby, we do rec uh, commend Mr. Zachary McBride to receive the Greensboro Fire Department Exceptional Civilian Service Award. Mr. McBride, if you're in the audience, we ask that you stand and again take the stage to the left and we'll hand you your award.
chapter 638, military order of Purple Heart, to come and present his award. Now, Mr. Hilton is accompanied by several other, several, several other folks. I'm sorry, I only got the name of Mr. Jim Scaller. I will assume that he will introduce the ones with him because I didn't get them. So, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're the Military Order of the Purple Heart, an organization of combat wounded veterans. I'd like to introduce uh, the people who's with me. Jim Scheller, he's our adjutant and past commander. Jim Taylor, he's past commander. Carol Scheller is down in front. She is the president of the Ladies Auxiliary for the Department of North Carolina. And Judy Taylor is the Ladies Auxiliary president for Chapter 638 in Winston-Salem. Our purpose was and is to fight an enemy, foreign or domestic, who threatened the freedom and democratic way of life we cherish here in the United States of America. But there are other groups of individuals whose purpose is to keep our streets, homes, and us safe from hurt, hurt, harm, or danger. Law enforcement officers and firefighters work tirelessly for us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and very seldom receive any recognition or simple thank you. The Military Order of the Purple Heart is a program to honor these individuals who, while in the course of their duty, are either injured or killed. While this is not a Purple Heart, it is a symbol of our heartfelt thank you for the sacrifice we make. And we make the black presentation now. Uh, the first one is, uh, if I can find the names, Matthew Clapp. Next one is Brian Bachman. Next one is Captain Sterling Sudo Absurd. Captain Shane Boswell. Here in 
Greensboro, we're lucky enough to have numerous individuals, and companies, and other entities that support the Greensboro Fire Department. Tonight, it is my honor to recognize one of those entities. The Naval Operations Support Center Greensboro has a unique trainer in their facility that allows the hazardous materials team to come in and actively train with very difficult simulations, very difficult scenarios. Many entities in the city will allow us to come in, but the Navy is even more than generous. With the activities that go on at the Naval Operations Support Center, there is one weekend a month, maybe, that we can train with all the activities that go on. And that weekend is their only off weekend, but it doesn't matter to them. They graciously offer their support and their time by coming in on their off days to allow us to train in their facility. And for that, I would like to recognize Lieutenant Commander Robert Hanvey and Chief Chad Sheets of the Naval Operations Support Center Greensboro. This time I'd like to ask Engineer Mark Westmoreland to come and present a certificate of appreciation. You heard it said tonight that firefighting can be a thankless job. I believe that most of the time that is not because you don't do a good job or because people don't appreciate it. I believe it's because the majority of what you do just simply goes unnoticed. The next few categories of awards require a nomination in order to be given, which simply means that someone in the past few months has caught you in the act of doing an outstanding job and felt it important that the rest of us should know about it. They wanted to make sure that what you did was noticed and show their appreciation. The first part of this section is for the Certificate of Appreciation. This award is presented to an individual or unit either called upon to serve or through their own initiative for an act that reflects positively upon the department. The first person to receive this award is Engineer Mark Armfield. You can come forward, please. This was awarded to him for his dedicated service to Mount Top Youth Camp. The second person to receive this award was Leslie Lippa. You can come forward. This was given for her performance on an incident that occurred in the county involving an overturned tractor trailer on a southbound Interstate I-85.
Jeff Crispin. This time I'd like to ask Engineer Maria Moss to come present the Medical Life Cycle Awards. All right, as Captain Don Smith said, this is the Medical Life Cycle Award. This award is presented to department members directly responsible for the use of any authorized medical act that results in the saving of a life. Documentation must be provided showing that the patient was either released from medical care or admitted to the hospital. Frederick Avery.
Jeremy Fleming. William Hayes with two awards. William Engel. Dustin Jones. Aaron Landreth with five awards. Jennifer Mann. Vicki Martin with two awards. Sean McGovern. Ryan McGregor. <laughs> Matthew Murphy. <laughs> Justin Parrish. Marty Redden. <laughs> April Robertson. <laughs> Timothy Wagner. Curtis Woody with two awards. This is the Technical Rescue Award that is presented to department members directly responsible for the technical removal of an individual from a hazardous environment. <coughs> Michael J. <Hi>. Bailey. Nika <coughs> Brown. Daniels, two 
Regional Awards. Josh Evans. Tim Gibbs. Nick Holder, three awards. Smith, firefighter Redden, along with Engine 8 crew, who led them out. 
I was outside the structure. Engine 48 carried him to the street where Michael Thomas, Keith Collins, Adam Moore started ALS care. The patient was admitted to Cone Hospital and later transferred to Baptist. Because of their action, these two individuals were awarded a life saving medal. Dispatch on a recorded structure fire. Engine 8 arrived immediately following engine 10 and ladder 10. Finding moderate smoke. Coming from the eaves and chimney. Command assigned engine 8 to search. Search plan was to enter on Division One to search above the fire for any viable life. I was first to make entry with zero visibility, sounded the floor and scanning with the tick as I went, with the remaining engine eight crew following.
turned the exit, finding the door closed. The door had no door knobs. Side. 
Good evening. I cannot express how fortunate and blessed I am to be here tonight. In fact, it's a great honor and privilege to be here with you all and standing on stage with these fine men who saved my life. 811 South Elm Street would have been my last call. And January 30th, 2014, 34 weeks ago today, would have been my last living day if it were not for these brave firefighters. <laughs> Most everyone knows part of what happened, but I think it's worth retelling some of the details in order to grasp the selfless bravery and heroism demonstrated by these men that fateful day. January 30th began like any other day. However, at 12.45 p.m., that would all change. What was initially reported as a car fire turned out to be a massive fire in a large commercial building downtown. And of course, when we arrived on scene, we did what firefighters do. We pulled our hose lines and we went inside to extinguish the fire. And yes, there was a car on fire. As a matter of fact, there were numerous cars on fire, as well as significant parts of the building. One of those cars on fire was being repaired and happened to be right below some of the steel trusses holding up the roof. Those of us on engine 11 and ladder 7 had no idea that when we entered that building, we had only about two minutes until the roof would collapse on us. When this did happen, we were all hit by this immense structure caving in. Thank goodness the members of Ladder 7, Shane Boswell, Matthew Clapp, Brian Basham, who, even though they were badly hurt, were able to rescue themselves by crawling and finding their way out from deep inside the burning building. Two other people with me, Firefighter Joe Denny from Engine 11 and Ladder 7 Engineer Phil Roof, were also struck by the collapsing roof, but managed to escape. On the other hand, I find myself on my back on the concrete floor, pinned under heavy burning wooden beams with my arms by my sides, unable to move anything except my feet. I immediately thought about my air and that I needed to conserve it. So I took a deep breath and I held it. But while I held it, I could feel the weight of the roof settling on my body, particularly across my chest. And as I lay there, I began to feel the burning from the wood timbers. 
I also heard Firefighter Joe Diddy call the May Day, and he mentioned my name. And so even under this burning debris, I was comforted because first, I knew he wasn't under there with me, and secondly, he knew where I was. I knew help was coming. In fact, I felt someone tugging on my boots trying to pull me out. Well, I didn't want to hold my breath too long because if I thought, if I did, I thought I would be so winded that I would lose, lose the air that I just saved. So I let that breath out. And when, it was, when I went to get my next breath, it was then I discovered there was no more. The weight of the roof compressed my airline and left me with no way to breathe. I could not remove my mask and with no air, it was not long before I lost consciousness. In essence, since I could not breathe and I was burning, my time was running out, literally. It was then and there that these brave men put their own lives in jeopardy to save my life. The roof has collapsed and there's a huge amount of fire all around. The fresh air from the collapse has literally, literally turn this building into an inferno. Parts of the roof are still hanging overhead, yet these men were prepared and they did not hesitate to enter the building to save my life. They could not clearly see what was above them and didn't know if more of the remaining roof or even the walls were going to collapse on them. Due to the fire and the weight of the fallen roof, rescuing me was not something that could be done quickly nor easily. For six minutes, six minutes, these firefighters remained in peril, risking their own lives to save mine. Furthermore, they had to fight the fire while they performed the rescue to keep us all from burning alive. They even thought to spray water on me and saved my left side from being badly burned. Yet through it all, through the grave danger they faced, they stayed inside until they were able to literally lift by hand this massive burning roof off of me, enough to pull me out of that building. And even then, they were not done. When they pulled me out, I was in respiratory arrest. So they had to get my gear off, start medical treatment, and help EMS get me to the ambulance. If these fine men had not been so brave and not acted so quickly, and if they had not been so well trained and so good at what they do, and if they had not put themselves at risk for so long, I would not be here today. Everything that has happened since then Every moment I have spent with my wife, Suzanne, my family, my friends, every breath I have taken, every step I have taken for the last 34 weeks or 238 days is because of these men. I will never forget you or your tenacity or your selfless courage. My life goes on because of you. And if God is willing, I will live to grow old because of you. Some people say firefighters are heroes. Well, you all are forevermore mine and Suzanne's heroes. We are eternally grateful. Thank you so much for saving my life.
and your firefighter, Nicholas Holder. Captain Rodney Holt. Captain Andrew Jones. Captain Brian Kincaid. Senior firefighter Christopher Stringer. Engineer Mark Westmoreland. The last award presented on this incident is the Medal of Valor. <coughs> the Medal of Valor is presented for an act of heroism which is clearly above and beyond the call of duty and exemplifies the highest degree of professionalism and extensive screening is required by the committee. Tonight, the Medal of Valor is being presented to Senior Firefighter Brian Fishman for his actions on January 30, 2014, at 811 South Dam Street. Firefighter Fishman, while surviving the collapse of the structure with his crew on Bladder 7, found himself alone with Senior Firefighter Matthew Clapp and Captain Shane Boswell trapped well inside the structure and under debris from the roof system. Suffering from a possible concussion, assisted senior firefighter Matthew Clapp, who was suffering from a compound fracture of his right leg, to navigate through the debris and to safety. While assisting senior firefighter Clapp out of the building, senior firefighter Baseman realized that another firefighter was trapped under a large beam. Without regard to his own safety, stopped and assisted the trapped firefighter along with Rick Cruz. Senior firefighter Baseman remained inside the structure and continued to assist until the trapped firefighter was freed and moved from the structure. Due to senior firefighter Baseman surviving the initial collapse, being injured himself, and assisting an injured firefighter out of the building, he also assisted with the rescue of the trapped firefighter and not knowing if a possible secondary collapse was imminent and without regard to his own safety, is deserving the Medal of Valor. Come April of next year, I will be able to make my fire department 27 years. In that time, I have not experienced 
experience that I've had in the last year. And the fact that I have watched men that I love and women and respect do incredible things. And I have read as chairman on this committee and heard of other things where I have actually not been there to witness to accept their writing. And what the firemen do for this city is incredible. And I feel honored and privileged to call myself a Grand Corps firefighter. At this time, <laughs> at this time, we are going to give the Up the Year Awards. I'd now like to ask Chief Brent Gerald to come forward and give the retiree of the year. Webster's Dictionary defines retired as withdrawing from one's position or occupation, <coughs> having concluded one's working or professional career. For well, the person that has received this award, still working hard, still doing the things that we say we all want to do as firefighters. If I've heard it once, I've heard it 10,000 times for someone in a position to make decisions about someone who may be hired here. I want to give back to my community. This person gives back to his community. He's asked to serve on various committees in his community. He is always available to assist with the youth and the elderly, whether fixing up houses or little repair jobs or anything that needs to be done. He is always there to do it. To the recruit class, he's a mentor. Father figure, confidant. He's a good Samaritan. I know he's come out of his pocket. Even though he knows, doesn't know that I know it. I know he's come out of his pocket. He's a good friend to those. He's a leader. He leads by example. Always leads by example. He's a PT leader. Imagine you're 20 years old, 20 something, and two people come in the room who are 60 something, and they say they're going to lead you in PT. You say, well, I can hang with these guys. <laughs> you start out 20 push-ups. Well, I can do that. 40 push-ups. That's what I'm supposed to do as a young man. 20. 60. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Most don't get to 60. And at 80, this person is still going strong and looking you in your eye and telling you to get up off your knees. <laughs> Most of you by now know that I am talking about Mr. Jesse Walker. <laughs> Senior Firefighter Tyler Chambers, 
Senior firefighter Ronald Daniels, engineer Ralph Bartlett, senior firefighter, senior firefighter or engineer Fred. I'm sorry, I don't know if you're an engineer or firefighter. I apologize. Fred Irwin, senior firefighter Larry Goldston, senior firefighter Jonathan Gordon, senior firefighter Brent Gray, inspector April Robertson, and senior firefighter Patrick Spain. Recipient of the Firefighter of the Year is Brent Gray.
if I call your name out, would you please take it? Those nominated this year for Fire Department Employee of the Year was James Johnston. And the recipient of the Fire Department Employee of the Year is James Johnson. Uh, at this time, this is the conclusion of our program. I'd like to thank each and every one of you.